Okay, so hello uh, to anyone who's checking this out. Uh, I'm speaking with Devon or Devon. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Devin, yep. And no uh, I know how to pronounce your name. I just had a brain fart there. My bad. Um, and uh, we're going to be discussing today. Uh, Devon has successfully put his uh, property under his society name with land titles, and that's in Texas. You are correct, Devon? No, it's actually, well, I'm in Texas, but this is a piece of property that my dad had in Kansas. Okay, um, cool. It was just, and it's not much, but uh, it's just uh, four lots he has in this little bitty town that his business was on for years and years. Okay, cool. Um, are there buildings? In, are there buildings, or is it just land? There's no. There's a uh, one. There's a uh, basically buildings on each half of it. Okay, cool, nice. And so you had mentioned that you had successfully gone through that process. So you just want to kind of just share your story on just what you did and how you did it and their response and sure. how it went and yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll just I'll start from the beginning Please. so that you know we have the whole groundwork and everything laid. Thank so, you. So um yep. Um so uh my dad called me and and uh sent uh a quick claim deed or um had just notified my brother and I he was going to basically um uh, he was putting that money or that property in our names and uh was going to just, you know, deed it all over to us both and just put our names on it, which he did. Um, so once I got that notification, I called him. I was like, uh, actually, I called my brother first. I was like, hey, I said, I got an idea. I said, I, I know a few things that you don't. I said, I want to take that piece of property. And I said, let's create a trust. We'll put that property in the trust and we'll be the, um, the trustees. And then we can set that up so that that property is not in our name and it's also untaxable you can't bet. tax it won't touch it he's like no hell no i'm not doing that and i was like okay well then we have to make a choice uh, a change then because i'm not doing this my name is not going to be on any properties good for you yeah so he's like well you just you do whatever you feel you need so i was like i'm gonna so got off the phone with him and called my dad said look i said um I appreciate, you know, what you're wanting to do here. I said, need to, we need to make a change. I said, one of two things has to happen. You either take all that property and you put it in my brother's name and get me off of it, or you split it in half, you give him half, and you deed half to me. He's like, well, what's going on? And I, and I told him, he was like, look, I, I don't want my name on the property. I don't want to own it. I want to control it, but I don't want to own it. Beautiful. I said, yeah. You know, anything can happen. Let's just say, you know, somebody drives into one of them buildings, something falls, they they get killed, they get seriously injured. Guess who they're coming after? Yeah. He said they're coming after the property owner. I said, exactly. So I'm not going to own it. So um, I said, and, and, uh, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I'm not going to be pissed. Whatever the case may be, whatever you decide, um, you guys let me know what you want to do, and, and I'm good with it. Beautiful. So either split it up or just deed it all to him. I don't care. It's, you know, to me in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's not going to break me. Yep. So, um, your morals said, and well, principles you, matter more. I understand. Yeah, absolutely. Plus it's just smart financial planning. Please go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. So he's like, yeah, he goes, um, no, he goes, I'll, I'll split it up. And he said, I'll put half in his name and half in your name. So, um, uh, about two weeks later, uh, we both get a quick claim deed. Um, and half the, I got his quick claim deed to notarize, turning, you know, signing half of it over to him and he got mine to notarize and sign half over to me, Beautiful. um, which it, that was all perfect and well and good. So he did his piece. I did mine and then, um, sent it all back. And then, um, I don't know, it was probably, oh, I'd started working on a, uh, um, a warranty deed just, you know, I basically went to AI and said, Hey, write me a warranty deed. And it did. It wrote probably 95% of it. Um, and I've, I used that. Um, and I had it laying here, just didn't do anything with it. And it laid here and laid here and laid here. And finally my, um, one of my oldest or my oldest son called me and says, Hey, said, uh, did you inherit a piece of property? It's like, what are you talking about? He said, well, it's in the newspaper. I was like, shit. <laughs> okay. Said, they just made that. They just brought that into the public. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, they just made that public that that piece of property now belongs to me. I said, I got to fix that. 
So he's like, well, there's your notification. So I promptly went and got my warranty deed out. And my next day off, I um, called up there and I talked to the register of deeds and told her what I wanted to do. And she said, I can't give you any um, advice, uh, any yeah. guidance, any advice yeah. on what needs to be done. She says, but call the abstract office, tell them what you're trying to do. They'll tell you, and they'll lay it all out for you, everything you need. I say, well, I've already got the warranty deed. I just need to figure out what needs to be in here. So when I ship it, you know, it'll be, you know, it'll have everything in it. You bet. So um, I, I called the abstract office, talked to them. Uh, a couple of back and forth phone calls between the abstract office and the uh, uh, register of deeds and got everything done, sent off. Well, I goofed up and I had sent off. Um, I had signed it with my society signature, Yeah, which was that was the wrong way to do it. It needed to be under my all caps name because that's who owned the property. It belonged to the all caps. So I had to sign, you know, um, for the all caps name by my autograph as my human person, basically, you know, so I had to change a few things in there and I paid them like 50, $55 with a, uh, postal money order. So I was paying them with, you know, a gold back currency. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, they, I sent it to them first. They sent it back. Um, I waited a couple of weeks to go get it out of my private mailbox. And then I uh, went up there, got it called. And she's like, no, she goes, you can't sign with your society stuff. You got to sign with your name. So I got that corrected, sent it off. Took about two weeks. Um, everything came back all hunky dory. It's stamped. It's dated. It's in the book. So now that property, that half of that property belongs to my trust or to my society, and it's non-taxable going forward, non-taxable going backwards, and non-taxable for this year. Perfect. So, it so, so was it? So, which document did you put the society name on when you transferred it from your name into the society? Was the warranty. The, the warranty the deed. Yep. Okay. So um, I just did a little dig, and I didn't want to do a quick claim deed. I wanted to make it more um, stable and official. Okay. So I had did a little research. My, my and... question that I'm going to throw your way on this now is within sending in that stuff, um, are you also doing the three-letter process to record your society law with the registry? And the reason I say that is because you, you've done the registration process, but now you <laughs> want to record title by laying the private law claim to it now that it's been legally registered. So okay. I, I would, I would, now that you have all of that, I would serve yeah. notice to their office of the, your notice of understanding and intent and claim a right to establish okay. that jurisdiction, especially if you didn't sign your name with the all rights reserved society law. And I know why they didn't want you to do that because that's reserving title and they want you to register it. So it's good. You did it that way because now it's properly recorded. Your society is on file, but now you want to record yep. the status of your society because it is, it does have international standing in that. So I would serve them notice of that to ensure that okay. it is now recorded in addition to being registered. So reg would that registration go to, give up title. Right. So then would that go to also go to the register of deeds yes. or would that go just, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever you were dealing with that office, just serve it to them and just keep your proof of, of service in that. Because then if anything in their legal system is saying, you can't, they're wrong, you're right. Because now you're bringing basically indigenous common law into it. Um, and okay. when you're getting ready to do that, shoot me an email and I'll send you the legal case law, the Supreme Court case law that recognizes the indigenous rights and undrip and all that. Because that would be good to have in there because that way they're not getting freaked out about us arguing sovereignty. We're just simply laying indigenous common law claim that's very well established in Supreme Court case law okay. now. Um, so I should be able to just take my claim of right that I have um, already signed and just I'm yeah sure so you, you'll, you'll literally copy. just make another photocopy of those three documents okay. and just yep, serve yep. them exactly like you did before it's the same process no matter who you're serving and it's just the same documents you don't have to redo okay yeah, yeah that'll be easy peasy yeah yeah that's yeah, fantastic I did, that, I did not know that idea i didn't know that part of it marcel so thank you appreciate that no no worries that's okay and and that's where i'm really grateful we're going through this because i understand all of this but like for myself personally the last property i had i was doing rent to own so i haven't fully done the transition of property 
under a society. Like I know it can be done. And, and I mean, I know people have done it and stuff, but I'm grateful that you're at that point because there's always that, that sticking part of okay between the registration, getting them to acknowledge that, and then the recording. And now that you've done the registration, in my mind, that was going to be the harder part because <laughs> just, just the yeah. recording title is super easy to lay over that. So I'm just so proud of you and you did fantastic in that. And um, if you wouldn't mind, like if you could make a copy and just blot out any personal information addresses and stuff. And if there's any way I could just get a copy of that for my own learning, I can keep it private if you don't want it public or anything, sure. um, but just for the, because yeah, no it'll help other people. So um, absolutely can do yeah, that I'm, I'm so proud of you absolutely um, oh I'm, I'm it was saying it was so much easier than i thought it was going to be and those women they were just beyond helpful trying to you know help me get all of that straight make sure i had everything in the document um per you know kansas statutes and the laws that i needed to have Beautiful. all of that and you know and i read down through the letter with them because they're because they told me like well you need to have this you need to have this hang on it's uh all right, so it's laying right here. So cool. it I had in there, you know, the instrument, who was prepared by, who it was sent to, um, and it had needed to have a um, Kansas statute saying, you know, pers pursuant to their the law, the real estate validation questionnaire is not required due to exception. And they said, you know, it requires a, like a number on it. And I told them where, what I was doing with it. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's this number. So, and then I had in here, you know, I just did the warranty deed. I said, I'm not, I'm just transferring. It's going to be $0, 0 cents. And I put, you know, my, um, so the, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you a really quick question. Cause I haven't actually had experience with drawing up deeds or anything. So uh -huh. you mentioned you did a warranty deed versus what was the other one you were considering doing or what was uh, the... a quick, my dad did a quick claim deed. Yeah. So for a deed, basically the property it... to my so if you're if you're the legally recorded owner of of that, then basically, do you have the ability to draft your own deed, or is it just simply a document attesting to the deed? Or I just don't understand. I guess no. enough about deeds. Like I know the deed so, you own something, right. but but the doing up right. of the deed that's cool. You guys can do your own. I guess is what I'm inquiring. Well, so what I did was um, uh, I just took the quick claim deed, and and I just. I did a little research between doing the quick claim deed and doing the warranty deed. And I decided to do the warranty deed because I wanted to make sure that this shit was getting moved from my all caps name Beautiful. over to my society where, um, you know, and I don't, and I mean, like you said, I need to set did, it up so that quick question, do you, you have my identity document, correct? Uh, I think so. I have to look, but yeah. Okay. Cause I'm the language sure in the identity document, it might be good to have a similar document drafted up, uh, tracing the path of the property from the legal now that it stands under the society in the private, just to have it attested yeah. to for the jurisdictional transition. Once you send those other three letters, you don't have to, but it's just something popping in my mind. Cause that's what we did. You don't read actually your paperwork does that for you. I'm overkill. Me. You don't need to do that. I'm just excited. So <laughs> yep, I, I'm just, <laughs> I really trust just me. I just I was so happy when I got this. I went and got it on Tuesday this week. And I was just, you know, I opened it up and I read through it all. Um, you know, and I even used the um the UPU labeling um when I put the return address. Um I, you know, I because I've got a private mailbox, like you know, like we yeah. we should all have. You bet. And then um doing the upu labeling you put uh, you know near whatever town your 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 po box is in and then you use the rural free delivery uh zip code yeah that's like general that. delivery almost instead of yes. the zip because it's an actual yes. physical land location rather than the routing number in washington dc i get yeah 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 exactly nice so yeah i mean it's just I put the legal description in here of what I was, what was transferred to, to my Beautiful. all caps name. Yep. And then uh, I put in the bottom of it, you know, subject to all easements, conditions, covenants, restrictions, reservations, limitations, and agreements of record Beautiful. provided this instrument shall not reimpose the same. Beautiful. And then I put uh, underneath that, it put not, not subject to real estate tax for 2024, all subsequent years and years to come. Um, and then existing app 
applicable governmental building and zoning ordinances and other government regulations. Beautiful. So, and yeah, so serving those three letters is just going to back up in private law and indigenous common law, all the claims that you've made. So that's the, it's just going to serve it. it. It creates the default judgment that literally your jurisdiction. So any agents ever try and say, oh no, you owe this, that you have full jurisdiction to hold your ground in law. That's beautiful, man. Okay. Perfect. You're a hero, buddy. Good perfect. Job. So proud of you. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm just, yeah. And I called, you know, told my dad, I was like, I got it done. You know, that probably oh, one no thing I want to mention, you. It doesn't... so an important thing is, and they do this at the bank too, so there's nothing wrong with it, but you'll notice where uh -huh. they list your society, your society is written in all caps, I assume, on the form. Uh, do, 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 do. No, I didn't write it in all caps. No, no, but they this do. That's my the document. Yeah, that's the only way their system can produce it. So spelling it that way is grammatically how you spell a bankrupt corporation. So that's why it's important to serve those three documents to them to record the the fact that you're actually unregistered, unincorporated. Well, um, all it's they already did through and it's fine. So the, the, the bank does it the same way. Like on our bank accounts, they put it in all caps. Yes. But yes. because we've served them the proper paperwork, it's their mistake, not ours. And it doesn't in any way diminish. Mm. So it's okay. But see, they like did, that. They yeah, but they didn't serve me any paperwork. I served the paperwork on behalf of, of um, the all caps name transferring to the private society. So they're, the only thing all caps on this yeah. is my all caps name. Everything oh, else, good. So everything is, else is correct. Upper, lower case. Okay, yes, good. Everything it's else your document, correct. so it's good. Okay, cool. Never mind. Yeah. Then. Okay. So right yeah, on. no. All they all they did was they stamped it. That's with, so perfect, um, Devin. That's so where perfect. it goes in what you know what copy it is, where it winds up. Um, it says it's in. Yeah, it's got a, a well hell. So well, don't, do don't show that? your private. Don't show your private. That's okay. Yeah. But, well, if if it's so, if yeah, it's it's, personal info on it, okay. But just it's it's your privacy. No. Keep your privacy. That's okay. Yeah. You can show so, it to me privately but, yeah. after. Yeah. But that's great. No, I love they, it. That yeah. It was it's all it's yeah. They just put their stamp on it, and it's all good. It's Excellent. my document, so they sent well, back the original. Well, now we just got to get a hold of everyone and help everyone transfer it over. Because now that we have examples we can show, like that's going to save everyone's house. Because this is what you just did is what everybody needs to do. And that's going to protect them when the national debt defaults. Because you have real claim to your yeah. title now, at least in law. I mean, now, the system can always do what it right. wants to do if they want to bully us. But in law, you're correct. You're cured. That's it. Like, well, so my next thing I want to do is I want to take my car that still belongs to the bank, my yeah. RV that still belongs to the bank. I want to do the same thing, transfer that to my society. And then if they go, well, Hey, you can't do that. Why not? The only thing, the only difficulty that you may find is if you retain title like that, you cannot get insurance. That's the only downside. Now we gotcha. have the ability to do private insurance under private law, but we just need enough money and organization to do it. And someone, I know right. a couple of guys who have insurance companies that are willing to work on that with us, but I think you need five mil, if I'm not mistaken, to bond your own insurance or whatever, but it is something we can do as soon as we're ready. Um, that'll be yeah. the answer basically. And that's something perhaps with the high council meetings we have coming up in that. And that's something actually with where you're at. Um, I've invited uh, Ken in that, but if you wanted to participate as well, um, I'm inviting a whole bunch of really high level movers and shakers, Edward Belanger, the Christian minister in Alberta, he's gotten judges disbarred. He knows how to turn the clerk back into a cleric, the court clerk uh -huh. into a cleric so that oh. then you're arguing spirit of law and you demand ecclesiastical accommodation. So he has that all down. And then Kelly Wolf is doing the independent reps and different writings. Um, Sipico, she's a clan mother uh, who does a lot of TPs in Winnipeg here and stuff. She has standing. And then I have a, um, a freedom coalition in Winnipeg of a bunch of millionaire business owners that are all freedom minded. They have like ships that they can get us out of the country. If we need, they have land in Costa Rica developments they're doing. Uh, Kelly just finished organizing the independent reps where they got actually elected into now they have independent uh, majority government in Panama now. Um, yeah. And that's what she did with them. So that's what they're bringing into the writings in Canada to get rid of the political parties and bring private law in through that in a blockchain voting system that's tamper proof. Um, so with you having this now as well, um, and just with you and Ken doing work together, you're at the level where I'd be comfortable if you want to participate in the high council, you'd be welcome to. Thursday the 10th, I think is when we're doing our first meeting at probably eight or 9 p.m. 
Um, if okay. you can make a grade, if not, it's okay. Uh, we'll be recording them in that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's just basically, that'll be the group where like, let's say with you having that now, let's make that a program. Let's get to everybody and say, you need to transfer it over. Here's how you do it. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Sure. Uh, Cause yeah. And uh, with you being in Texas too, it would be really good to start programs about protecting Texas, especially with the mass immigration coming through the border. It's insane. Mm -hmm. And not that you have to be against that, but just protecting community organizing, you know, sure. community watches. And basically what I usually like to do is start a food program in an area. So you just have people knock door to door collecting food and money. One person in four hours will collect a hockey bag full of food and between 50 and 200 bucks cash with the scripts we have in that. So if you have like five or 10 people going out, you can easily bring in a grand or two in a shift and then everyone has food to eat. So you're not having to buy as much groceries. The people who collect uh, the food and that we give 15% that they keep. So you'll have 15, 16 year olds bringing a week worth of food home from every shift for their family. And after two, three shifts, they don't need it. And then they're like, well, I don't want to take it. And I'm like, well, do you have, you know, uncle, someone on social assistance who could use some food. And so they start pushing it out through their community and you should see how proud they are. Um, and then yeah. once the food is up, then we can also set up advocacy and door to door teams, or as the food is going door to door, we can drop off information about the transferring your house program. That was originally why we did the food program, because that paid for the printing costs for whatever information we wanted to give at the door to raise awareness about whatever we wanted to basically. Right, right. And then with having an Indigenous common law standing now, we can start out, start setting up advocacy law firms for each suburb or area. So everyone being violated by the system in any way or who needs help gets a hold of the office for that area. And then we can litigate or advocate or whatever needs to be done, basically. And we have standing in court now through that, which is cool. Um, so there's lots of stuff that we can do. There's also the Save Dogs Association program we had where we sell the $3 boxes of chocolates for 20 bucks a box. Yeah. But there's a raffle draw on the outside for a free society and maybe some free chocolates. And then I actually had a deal with my buddy, <laughs> the construction company. So the third prize was a free renovation quote and everybody won third prize. And then whatever wow. jobs got booked, we earned 10% off the back end of whatever books, bookings the construction company got from doing the quotes for people and stuff. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. And if you don't like any of those, I have one guy and I mean, you may not want to do this in, in the States because they're probably a little more severe on it, but I have a guy in Alberta who's going to start selling pot right away <laughs> just because that's what he <sighs> wants to do. Um, right. Yeah. There's, there's all kinds of things you could do. The main thing is just figuring out how much money you need and then, okay, what the heck do we have to sell to get it to where? So just, if you can just figure right. out what your comfy number is and um, cause even if it's something you make 50 bucks a sale off of, you know, if you need 500 bucks a sure. day, and it's it's 10 sales and then it's just okay you know how if we talk to 10 people how many of those are a sale if it's say one or two out of 10 okay that's two out of 10 so we got to talk to 50 or 60 people today in order to hit our right. six or 10 sales so we make our three to 500 bucks and then we're on track for our 15 grand a month or whatever like right it seems like a lot to make a lot but if you can just bring in a thousand bucks a day you got 30 grand a month oh yeah and that's just what we're yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. and, yeah. and another thing too would, would be really good that wouldn't actually take a lot of work is source farmers in Texas that you can deliver food directly from them to people at the door for organic food, whatever, just find some good suppliers and then just come up with a wholesale rate for them. And then what your retail rate will be to people's doors. And then literally you're just, yeah, you can just hand out flyers in each area. People want it, sign them up, deliver, deliver, deliver free money, free money, free money, pretty much anything that's uh, consumable, that's reusable is really good for that kind of stuff. So anyway, I'll pause yeah. there, but just, yeah, as you guys want or whatever. Um, but do you want me to invite you to the high council mastermind one that we'll be doing? Is that something sure. you want to participate in? It's sure. just a good place Absolutely. to make connections pretty much. And then, Oh yeah. Everyone on what's nice is everyone who's going to be in that council. They all specialize in something a little bit different. So we're all working towards freedom, but it's summer in the legal system, kind of like how Ken is focusing more on the accepted for value stuff and that stuff a little bit more and discharging debts. And now you have that and then the different. Yeah. So all of us combined, it's coming at the system from every single direction in peaceful, wonderful ways. And then a guy, Jason, I know he's in Calgary. He's organizing the out of pedo. A challenge and uh, he's in touch with a lot of military and police so he's noticing them that they basically need to switch sides and uh, and he has a lot of support on that and then Kelly Wolf in uh, Ontario there she also has the 200 cops that refuse to take the COVID jab and like yeah. out, just out. so 
it's all interconnected, which is really good. And then we have a bunch of guys who are doing like sovereign banking and stuff is coming. They're getting their MasterCards ready. And uh, and yeah, it's just really, really exciting. So I'm excited to move all this forward. And uh, But anyway, I wasn't trying to get into all that, but just I'm so excited yep. for what you've done because now we have the exact, exactly what to give people. And you're the man, dude. So uh, is but, there anything you know- Anything else? Was, I'll turn it back over and do some listening now. So. No, I, I'm, I think I got everything. Um, okay. and like I said, Marcel, it was just, you know, doing a little digging, doing a little researching. Um, and I mean, like I said, I got on, I let AI write my damn letter for Christ's sakes. And it <laughs> yeah. really did a great job. And then I just had to fill in a few blanks, add some extra stuff to it. Um, got it notarized that was the one thing i left out when i got this all done i had to have it notarized yeah. and sent in but other than that and That's i've great. got a i've got some notaries here close to me that are you know they're notarizing every document i put in front of them they are fine with it they don't have any and i even sat down and started telling them you know some of the stuff that i do because they were just like well what's this what's this document yeah. what's that document so i just sat down i was like you should see the stuff that I've got. It would blow your mind. Yeah, you bet. When so, uh, in times I've sat down with certain lawyers and showed them our paperwork, especially initially when we were starting, they look at it, they look yeah. at me and be like, where did you get this? And they'd just be like, serious. It was hilarious. Um, but like how you're finding they're kind of excited about what you're doing. I find we get that reaction about half the time, if not even yeah. a little bit more, because these people who work in the system, they see this stuff all the time. And so when you can show them something new, they're fascinated by it as long as they have an open mind and they're not prejudicial because they've judged sovereignty or what they've heard yeah. or whatever. Um, but you do have the right to do it. And the other thing with notaries is the notary protest process, they're equal to a judge. Yep. Like, like, like that's why notaries are so important. And I always feel like that's why there's a little bit of a conflict of interest. If lawyers are the notaries, it's good when a notary is not a lawyer, it can be advantageous if they're both sometimes, but um but so many times, you know, if a lawyer is also the notary, they'll interfere in notarial process because of their their loyalty to being a lawyer and keeping control. <laughs> but there are a lot of good people out there. And that's something I learned. Oh, when yeah. I, a little bit ill. I actually had a prison guard tell me he's like, I work for the system, but I'm not the system. I'm not your enemy. And that's where sometimes in this movement, especially if you've been at it a long time, like I have. Um, you kind of tend to view people in uniforms as the enemy. But it's so important to remember they're not. Until they prove they are, you know, some yeah, are, but right. in general, most of them are just good people trying to do a job, earn a living in the only yep. way they've ever been shown. And exactly. if they're shown another way, a lot of them will embrace it because it's their own freedom too, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, well, the good thing is Go my, my notaries that I have, they're, they're older like me. So they're not young. And, you know, when I lay this stuff down, like, Hey, what's that? You know, uh, I took, what was it? I took over to one of them. Um, Oh, it was my revocation of election. Cool. She had never seen it. She never heard of it. She goes, oh, are you, uh, you know, is this has something to do with the election? I was like, no. I said, this is my opt out. What do you mean? I said, I'm opting out of the system. This is going to get sent to the IRS telling them basically, hey, you're not going to be charging me taxes anymore. I'm opting out of the voting system. I said, I'm slowly methodically taking myself out of the system. My all caps name. She's like, your all caps name. What do you mean by that? I was like, you know, your all caps name. That's on everything. Open your wallet. Look at your driver's license. Look at your credit cards, everything. And, and people don't think about that. And then once you see that, it's like a kid and I were talking, once you see it, you can't unsee it. You bet. You know, just like I tell people, People look at Home Depot and Lowe's. It's all caps. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's just a different size font. It's still all caps. Yeah. Pay attention. What? No. And they just they just can't, you know, wrap their mind around it or fathom that, you know, what we're living in is the damn matrix. And they just they either don't want to see it or they just can't see it because they've been lied to so much that the lies become the truth. Well, and the other thing is everyone's been told they're free, but what no one's explained to anybody is when you register things into that corporate system, you're actually putting good assets into a bankrupt trust. Like like you're putting assets into a foreign corporation's bankruptcy to back that foreign corporation's debt. And and that's where no financial planner worth their salt would ever do that or recommend it, but they don't understand that's what's happening. And that's the fraud, which is beautiful for everybody because 
if they were honest about it, then it would be binding and we all be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so thank goodness that, that they were shady about it because I think honestly, if they had been honest, they probably could have gotten away with it because most people wouldn't have resisted. I mean, some yeah. would, and maybe it wouldn't have worked, but thank God it's not working out for them. And uh, again, just thank you for just helping wake people up, man, because you know, a lot of times I come across so passionately in my work. Sometimes, you know, if I'm yelling at agents, this or that, um, I scare people off. And with you, you're so calm and you're so intelligent and you're very methodical. And if I'm a government agent working in an office and you come in and talk to me, I'm not going to judge you right off the hop. You know what I mean? There's nothing about you that yeah. sets off alarm bells. And that's so important when you're trying to make headway in these kind of things, because you're not crazy. And, and, and that's what so many people need to understand is the people doing this work are the ones who love freedom the most. And I'm grateful when mature people do this who are a full-grown adult yeah. and like for me as a man i'm 45 but i didn't get to raise my own son i've kind of grown up on the streets and running businesses so i still feel like i'm 20 or 25 inside a little bit i, I don't feel like i've fully grown up in all the ways that you, especially being a parent um and i'm very just super super grateful for you for coming on board and learning and applying what we've learned and then taking it even beyond that and now what you're doing with it for yourself and what you're doing with ken and uh Bottom of my heart, I'm just honored to know you, man. And just, just. Yeah, no, I, yeah, same yeah. here. I just, you know, I, and, and, and I have over the years, I mean, I just feel like I've surrounded myself with people who, um, or I've worked for people who are not smarter than me, even though I've, you know, thought for the longest time they were. Yeah. And then they do something. I'm like, why, why would you do that? That makes no sense. That's dumb. <laughs> but, you know, or I, I don't know. I just, it's time to, you know, start surrounding myself with people who are thinking the same way I am and who are, you know, going to move in that direction. And because I'm, there's a lot of people in my life that are just are not, they don't get it. They don't understand it. They don't want to understand it. Um, but there are those that are kind of sitting on the wayside watching and look and learning and, and seeing what I do. And then they're like, you know, they're kind of waiting to see the, if I'm going to, go to jail or if I'm not going to jail, you, you know, bet. and if I don't go to jail, okay, let's go. <laughs> you bet. And I will, I will personally guarantee Devin with the things you're doing and the way you're doing it, there's no hope of going to jail for you. <laughs> oh yeah. No, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not worried about that at all. Yeah. The, the only time yeah. I ever found that you really get into any hot water is literally if you advocate direct against police or judges, investigating them, going after them, but shy of that, no one cares for financial planning. It's really nice, actually, that you don't get in trouble with any of this. It's just more and more freedom yeah. as you're ready for it and take those next steps. And like you, at some point, I want to dissolve my legal body corporate completely. Um, but for me, I want to make sure that we have infrastructure up because I want to still go to a hospital and do different things and not have to. Yeah, I mean, honestly, honestly, I can still go to dentists and stuff even without showing legal ID because um, I don't use health insurance or any of that anyway. Um, but uh yeah, it's 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 a funny thing. Even though that whole system is evil, it's 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 a funny safety net to give up completely. And that's why it's I recommend for most people to have your wealth in place, have things organized. Um, but I'm very proud of you how you're working towards that step and the methodical way you're doing it in in a really responsible, just efficient, well thought out, great way. Like, yeah. Well, but I want to I want to be able to fight these bastards and oh, use yeah. their own tactics and their own oh, yeah. game against them. You know. Oh, yeah. That's and what that we're going to talk about on like, Thursday. Yeah, hundred percent. That just yeah. you know, it takes it, it. It well, a it takes a willingness to to learn and be patient. Um, to learn to to fight the way they're fighting, so you know you have that chance. Yeah. You can't just you know put, put your head down and go at them like a bull because that doesn't work. Someone, someone and, else. And I've always been one that wanted to go ahead. I just wanted to say someone else, it just occurred to me because you're in Texas and that um, Ron Paul, uh, when he retired, he established or helped establish the de jure Republic of the USA again. Um, and uh -huh. I've seen their documents in that. And I know they're still around in that. Um, Randy Shannon was a senator in the de jure Republic, and I'm still in touch with her. Um, but that might be a group to reach out to 
because I know for a fact they're doing sovereign rights held by indigenous power. And this is back 12, 15 years ago, I saw their paperwork in that. So I don't know exactly where they're at or what they're doing now, but it'd be a lot of good power for allies for you to have that seem to be on the right side of things. And I mean, anyone who's in politics, I don't fully trust them, but Ron Paul was always very against the system and his farewell speech. He was happy yeah. they never put up buildings. And uh, the Republic is definitely a de jure proper thing. Not that you necessarily have to be under what they're doing, stay under your own power, but it's, it's definitely, yep. you know, they're, it'd be a good group of people. And especially given that they have such a base in Texas and that as well. Um, but uh, it, remind me of that and remind me about Randy Shannon or even uh, her okay. videos are, are on our YouTube playlist with her information to contact her. But if you have any trouble, let me know and I can shoot her a message or give her your info or whatever. Oh, sure. Sounds good. Yeah. She, she works as a, a naturopathic doctor now. She kind of got out of the political side. Um, but she's still. Oh yeah, I've seen her. her. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know yeah. who you're talking about. The yeah. fact, the fact she's utterly, exquisitely beautiful is not a hard thing either. But uh, just an absolutely wonderful, intelligent, amazing lady all around. So, um, yeah, and just very smart and very dedicated to freedom and that. And uh, one of my heroes. I don't have that many, but she's yep. definitely on the list. So yeah, sounds good. Great. Um, I don't think there's too much else to go over for this. Um, so within that, I'll just kind of wrap up the recording. So to anyone watching, uh, please check out the other videos. And if you have any questions, just shoot us an email, uh, privatelawtrust at outlook.com. And then if you have questions or anything, we can always forward you to Devin if, if you guys want to talk or whatever. Uh, okay, so I'm going to shut off the video. Thank you guys for watching. And thank you, Devin, for sharing your story. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more after there. So I'll just shut off the video. All right. Sounds good.